a malfunctioning pump caused an automatic shutdown of the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant on Thursday, the second such event in as many months. Plant officials and government regulators said the shutdown at the plant, where a partial meltdown of a reactor in 1979 is considered the worst commercial nuclear power plant accident in U.S. history posed no threat to public health or safety. The shutdown occurred shortly after 2.15 p.m., when the failure of a coolant pump tripped the computerized system that shuts down the reactor in the event of any safety-related problems. Once the reactor has cooled down enough, plant workers will be able to access the containment building and troubleshoot the problem. Nuclear Regulatory Commission spokesman Neil Sheehan said, there are three videos and one article in the description box below to hear more about the venting and status of the plant. Members of Japan's governing Democratic Party have decided to stick with their man. They've chosen Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda to lead them into the next election. Delegates voted Noda in at a leadership convention in Tokyo. NHK World's Mayuko Ambe is covering the story. Delegates here have given Prime Minister Noda another mandate. The voting results show that he won with an overwhelming majority over three other contenders. They campaigned against the Prime Minister for nearly two weeks. They attacked Noda's policies including measures to help low-income households following the tax hike, steps toward joining a free trade agreement in the Pacific region, and his new energy policy. Most of all, they criticized the way Noda managed the party. They blamed him for the departure of a number of party members. But in the end, the challengers failed to gain enough support. Other possible contenders may have proven more popular, but they decided not to run. They may have considered it unwise to become the head of a party that may well lose in the next general election. Mayuko Ambe, NHK World, Tokyo. So Yoshihiko Noda does keep his job as leader of the Democratic Party, but his days as Prime Minister of Japan could be numbered. Joining me now is NHK World Senior Political Commentator Masayo Nakajima. Masayo, so mm -hmm. what's next for the Prime Minister? Well, Noda will likely be forced to call a general election between November and January. You know, the opposition helped Noda pass his package of tax and social security reforms. In exchange, he promised to call a dissolve the law house soon, but he doesn't want to. His approval rating has fallen to about 30 percent, and his Democratic Party has lost support too. Many voters opposed to his, uh, his plan to double the consumption tax. Others didn't agree with his decision to restart two nuclear reactors this summer. But no election means no opposition support. And Noda needs that, again, to pass budget-related bills in order to keep government services funded. So if he does call a general election, then what kind of challenges would he face? Well, Noda's DPJ is trailing in the polls behind the main opposition and the former ruling LDP and the new party, Japan Restoration Party, which is led by the mayor of Osaka. Toru Hashimoto is attracting attention with his populist and nationalist proposals, such as cutting the number of Diet members in half and promoting free trade. The Democrats took office three years ago, ending more than half a century of almost unbroken rule by the LDP. They promised change, but they couldn't deliver. You know, voters are now considering giving another chance to the former ruling LDP or taking a chance on the yet untested new party, Japan Restoration Party. Politics in Japan could be in for a change now. So what sort of changes should we then expect? Well, uh, it is looking like that the LDP or uh, the Japan Restoration Party could win the most seats in, the, in, in an election in the lower house. Japan's next prime minister would be from one of those parties. Both parties support uh, Noda's consumption tax hike. But both are critical of how the Prime Minister has handled territorial disputes with China and South Korea. 
They are pushing for Japan to take a stronger stance. However, no party is expected to win majority alone. In other words, the party with the most seats will have to form a coalition with the second or third winning party. You know, that would have a big impact on Japan's domestic and foreign policy. Masayo, thanks as always. The United States has issued another warning to Iran. It says time is running out for a diplomatic solution to the country's nuclear program. UN envoy to the United Nations Susan Rice spoke at a UN Security Council meeting. She cited a report by the International Atomic Energy Agency that suggests Iran is stepping up uranium enrichment in defiance of international pressure. Rice said there's still room for dialogue between Iran and six world powers including Russia and China, but also warned that time is running out. We will not engage in an endless process of negotiations that fail to produce any results. Time is wasting. British and French UN envoys also called for effective sanctions against Iran. But China's deputy envoy Wang Min says his country is opposed to any additional sanctions or military action against Iran. The International Atomic Energy Agency is calling for stronger safety measures at nuclear power plants around the world. The UN watchdog made the call in a resolution passed unanimously at its annual conference in Vienna. The resolution urges member countries to accept IAEA inspection teams and establish an independent nuclear regulatory authority with qualified personnel. Since last year's conference, only six nations, including France, China, and Japan, have accepted IAEA inspections. For the first time, Israel says it will allow the UN agency to inspect its nuclear research center. Israel is not a signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, but another Israeli nuclear facility in Dimona will not be open to IAEA inspections. Israel is suspected of developing nuclear weapons there. International criticism of Israel could increase as the country refuses to fully disclose information on its nuclear program while condemning Iran's nuclear ambitions. That reminds me, there is also a great video today by House of Representatives Dennis Gusinich about the new National Park Bill HR-5987 that would create a new national park named after the Manhattan Project. What a complete joke, Kustinich goes on to explain that there are currently 73 nuclear plants that have been granted 20-year operating license extensions, and 33 more in process of extending their license. In addition, Kustinich explains the horrid conditions at the Davis Best Nuclear Power Plant and how a whistle blower from the NRC said the plant knowingly made false statements about its safety. The video is really good. I think you would like to hear it. I left a link in the description box below for the two.